<laughs> Let's lay down in Shavasana, guys. Today is a gray, rainy day here in Tokyo, so I thought we're gonna get some energy going. Just to... Because otherwise, if it was me, I would just be laying around all day being like, oh my god, the weather is so bad today, so we're gonna be moving a little bit. Let's lay down in Shavasana, like we always do. Legs slightly apart, hands by the sides of the body, palms facing up. And let's begin breathing through the nose, into the stomach. No need to control the breath, let's just allow the breath to flow naturally and bring our attention to that flow. See if you can relax the legs a little bit, relax the hands and the arms, and we're going to leave any worries, concerns, work outside of the room. And as we do that, as we put those worries, those concerns and work outside of the room, see if that translates in your body into further relaxation anywhere in the body. It could be sometimes that we are worried about something and we are clenching our jaw without even realizing or tensing our limbs. See if by leaving all that mind chatter outside, the body also finds some easiness, some relaxation. And maybe the breath deepens. With the inhale, the belly expands, relaxed. And with the exhale, the navel falls towards the spine. Just naturally, no need to force it. Let's bring the feet together, raise the arms above the head and give ourselves a nice, nice, nice stretch, pushing through the heels, through the bones. And exhale, release, bend the knees. Let's roll to the right side on the mat. And using the hands, gently bring ourselves up into a seated position. Legs are crossed, spine is straight, hands on the knees or chimudra. And we breathe here. We continue with natural diaphragmatic breaths. And take a moment to scan the body. Check with your legs, the hips, your abdomen, your chest. How does everything feel today? Relax the shoulders while maintaining an upright position. And without forcing, let's begin to deepen the breath in through the nose. Feeling in the stomach, feeling the lungs expanding the ribcage, feeling the throat, maybe feel the clavicle raise a little bit 
and exhale slowly and with control from stomach, lungs and throat. Keep breathing deeply at your own pace. And pay mindful attention to the breath. See if the inhale and the exhale can become a similar length. If you are comfortable with Ujjayi breath contracting the back of the throat, you may activate it now. And you are welcome to maintain that Ujjayi breath throughout the whole practice as well. Breathing naturally into the stomach again, we will build heat with two rounds of Kapalbhati. The first one will be 20 pumps and the second one 40. Let's get ready, inhale and exhale, inhale and begin. Capacity, hold the breath. And as you continue to hold the breath, relax the body, sitting upright. Slowly and with control, exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Begin. slowly and with control 
Exhale, all the air out. Keep breathing naturally. And once again, if comfortable with Ujjayi breath, you may continue to incorporate it in your practice. Your eyes are closed. Let's gently open them. Bring the arms up. Interlace the fingers and give ourselves a nice stretch. Push the palms towards the ceiling. Drop the shoulders. Long spine. Exhale, release, interlace in front of you. Turn the palms out, push away. Separate the shoulder blades. Seek to begin to feel the upper back. Navel pulls in towards the spine. So we begin creating two opposite forces. The navel pulls in and back. The hands are pushing away from you. And inhale, release, let's interlace the hands behind the body, extend the elbows and lift the arms as much as we can while keeping the chest open. Keep breathing. And release. Let's lift the arms up again. Inhale, elongate towards the ceiling. And as we exhale, let's drop the right hand behind the body, left one on the right knee. Inhale here again, elongate. Exhale, twist. And look behind you. Beautiful. Keep grounding down through the sit bones, both of them. Reaching up through the crown of the head, find that length. And with every exhale, maybe we can twist just a little deeper. You can always use the breath. Inhale, coming back up, both arms up. Exhale at center. Inhale again, elongate. And exhale to the other side, left hand behind the body, right hand on the left knee. Inhale, elongate. Exhale, twist. Pay attention to the breath, to any differences that you may feel between the previous side and this side. Grounding down through the sit bones, drawing tall to the ground. And inhale, come back to center, arms up, elongate, and release. Make a fist with both hands and shrug the shoulders to the ears. And exhale, release. We'll do two more. Inhale. Last one, inhale. Let go. Let's take cat and cow. So we'll get onto all fours. Hands right under the shoulders with the fingers spread wide apart. Knees right under the hips. So the knees are slightly apart. Check with your arms, elbow crease parallel to the front edge of your mat. Check that we are not dumping onto the belly. So maybe gently bring the navel towards the spine into a neutral position. And on your inhale, begin to project the chest forward. Pay attention to the shoulders, the shoulder blades. Look in front of you or up if that's accessible. And exhale, arch the back like a cat. Navel lifts towards the spine. Inhale, projecting the chest forward. Gentle back bend. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Open the heart. Exhale. Cut. And in your cut, curl the toes here. And keep lifting the hips up, back, into downward facing dog. And we can begin to gently bend the knees. Elongate the spine. Find length in the sides of the body as well. Sink the chest between the shoulders. Relax the neck. And on your next exhale, let's drop the knees onto the mat again. Keep the hips above the knees and walk the hands forward. Then lower your forehead onto the mat. If your forehead is touching the mat here, Check that your arms are still actively pushing onto the mat. So your body weight is not concentrated on your forehead. The arms are active. And you may feel it in your shoulders. If this is enough for you, please stay here. If your body feels like it wants to go a little deeper, you may begin to work with the shoulder blades, drawing them towards each other, and lower your chest and chin to the mat. Again, if this is too much, stay on your forehead. If your chin is on the mat, work with your arms. The upper arm rotates externally. The forearm rotates internally and creates traction that keeps you in place. Pressing on the hands, slowly coming back up onto all fours. Walk the hands towards yourself and sit back for a moment in child pose. Lower again the forehead to the mat, your seat bones on your heels. And deepen the breath. Directing your breath to your lower back, the back of your rib cage. See if you can feel any expansion. Pressing on the hands, come onto all fours again. And let's bring the right foot next to the right hand. The left knee is on the mat. If you, feel, if you have a sensitive joints and the left knee hurts, you can place a folded blanket or a cushion under the back knee. And we're going to take our right hand Place it on the right knee and kind of push that right knee away from us. The right foot may come to stand on the edge. If that doesn't hurt you, it's okay. Let the foot float a little bit and keep sinking your hips forward. Breathe.
Gently bring your knee back up. The right foot is flat on the mat, right hand on the mat. Step back into your downward facing dog. Let's take a breath, a breath here. Inhale the left leg up and exhale that left foot next to the left hand. Right knee on the mat and let's prepare to take the same pose. Left hand on the left knee and gently begin to push that knee away from you as you continue to sink the hips down towards the mat. Keep the right elbow straight, actively pressing on the mat so we don't collapse onto the right arm. Deep breath and a happy smile. And by today's class, we will be checking if we can fly. Otano Shimizu. Gently bring that knee back. Left hand on the mat. Let's step back, downward facing dog. And looking at your hands, walk towards them. Coming to the top of the mat, let's roll all the way up. Until we are ready for our sun salutation. Trying to get my shirt in place because it keeps rolling over my face. Let's do a couple rounds of the sun salutation. We start with both feet either together or parallel to each other under the hips if that feels more balanced for you. Hands in prayer in front of the heart. Drop the shoulders away from the ears and take a moment to connect with the breath. And your inhale, raise your arms up and maybe gently arch. Exhale, fold all the way, spine straight, hands next to the feet. Inhale, right foot back, knee on the mat and look in front of you. Hold the breast plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin or forehead down. Inhale, cobra, open the heart, drop the shoulders. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale the right foot forward between the hands. Exhale left. Inhale up. Exhale prayer. Inhale. Exhale fold. Inhale left. Hold plank. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale left, exhale right, fold here, inhale, exhale. Let's do one more round on your own pace completely, so you follow your own breath. Just a reminder, one more round means both sides, so the right, the right side completely and then the left side completely, following your own breath. Let's start together and then we each go our way. Inhale.
And when you finish your round, you can take a moment to catch your breath, standing at the top of the mat. Let's raise both arms up. The palms don't necessarily need to touch, they can just face each other. And ground through the soles of your feet. Check with your body, scan your body. Tuck the tailbone in. See if you're thrusting your rib cage forward. And maybe tuck it in as well. Keeping that integrity, let's gently sit back into our imaginary chair. Get comfy, maybe a little deeper. And check with the tailbone. It's very easy here as we sit to kind of start to push the tailbone back. Maybe tuck it in, activate the core. Bring the hands in prayer in front of your heart. And let's step the right foot back into a lunge, high lunge. Make any necessary adjustments. Push through the back heel, the back knee is straight. And we'll take a twist, bring the right elbow onto the left thigh. And using that resistance, see if you can twist a little bit to look to the left or even look up at the ceiling if possible. Coming back to center, we'll bring the right foot back next to the left. To your chair and exhale fold forward you can straighten the knees or if that's too much for you you can still keep the knees slightly bent in the forward fold and bring the belly to the thighs inhale let's come halfway up Extend the spine, open the heart, and the hands can be on the mat or on your legs, if that allows you better access to the spine. Maybe separate the feet about hip width apart or maybe a bit more. Exhale here. As we inhale, release the arms, and we're going to come to squatting. Keep the arms extended in front of you, maybe the belly as close to the thighs as you can. Squat all the way down. Breathe. If you fall, it's okay, it's again. Okay. As we exhale, folding forward, once again, forward fold. Find the forward fold that works for you. On your next inhale, once again, squat. All the way down with control, take your time. Sometimes playing with the distance between the feet helps. And exhale, forward fold. And let's roll all the way up. If the feet are separate, bring them back together again. Because who doesn't want to sit again? In that beautiful chair of ours, raise the arms up. Inhale, check your form, tuck the tailbone in, rib cage in. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. The shoulder blades draw gently towards each other and down towards the waist. And on your next exhale, sit into that nice, nice chair. Tuck the tailbone in, beautiful guys. 
I hope your chair is comfortable and plush. Maybe a little deeper. And hands in prayer. We'll now step back with the left leg into your high lunge. Take a moment to make any adjustments that you need. Push through the back heel and bring the left elbow to the right thigh. Use that resistance to twist. Coming back to center, we'll step the left foot forward next to the right, sit back into your chair. And exhale, fold down all the way, lift the hips up. And if necessary, bend the knees, bring the belly to the thighs, and let's hold our elbows here. Hands on the mat or on your legs, inhale halfway up. If your hands are on the mat, you can try to jump back into plank. If your hands are on the legs, you can bring the hands down and step back into plank. It's your choice entirely. Knees, chest and chin or forehead down. Inhale, cobra. Downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale the right foot next to the right hand. Left knee on the mat. Once again, right hand on the right knee and gently push it away. Opening the hips, sink down. Press down through the left arm. Bringing the right knee to center, extend that right leg. So we bring the hips back and we extend that right leg in front of us. Flex the foot, push through the right heel. Inhale here. And exhale, fold onto that right leg. It doesn't matter how deep we go. If it's, if it's hard to fold, if you find that you are pretty high, you can use anything that serves as props around you. So you can actually elevate your hands on thick books, blocks, cushions, anything you have around you. As always, by folding forward, what we want to do is elongate the spine. So think again of those two forces. Your hips pull back, especially the right hip pulls back and the crown of the head pulls forward. And that's how we eventually fold onto that leg. Let's come to sit down all the way back. Both legs can stretch in front of us and lay down. We'll take the right foot and hook the right foot on the elbow crease of the left arm. Hug that right leg. And we are taking a reclined pigeon. So if bringing that leg is too much close to you, you can always hold the foot a little higher and gently pull the foot just to yourself. If the leg is close to your chest, then keep it there. Breathe, keep the spine straight and the shoulders relaxed.
we touch now the right foot with the right hand from the inside, the inner arch of the right foot. And we'll take happy baby. We've taken happy baby before. So this is just half happy baby. The right foot is flat almost against the ceiling left hand on the left leg and we gently pull the right knee towards the right armpit or the ground it will depend on the person breathe deeply into that hip the knee may or may not touch the ground. Release that right leg in front of you and we're going to catch the hamstring behind the thigh or depending on your possibilities. So you can start here with the hamstring or you can catch the shin if you can maintain the knee straight. With the index and middle finger of the right hand, you can even catch the toe. So find the catch that works for you keeping that left leg straight on the mat and we gently begin to pull that right leg towards ourselves. Always keep the knee straight. So if keeping the knee straight is too much, maybe you need to go a little higher and support your leg here. This is enough as long as you are feeling your own stretch. Breathe into the leg. See if with every inhale we can send that breath to the leg. And with the exhale, gently pull a little deeper. Let go of the leg, both arms overhead. And let's roll all the way up to seated. Hands plant on the mat and we can step or jump back into our Chaturanga. Nice, nice jump, Yom. Cobra or upward facing dog. Your choice. And downward facing dog. Let's take the left leg up as much as we can and step that left foot next to the left hand, right knee on the mat, left hand on the left knee. Let's begin to push the left knee away as we sink onto the hips. You may notice that we've been working with the hips a lot. They may feel a lot looser now. They may, they may feel different than at the beginning of the class. Feel free to explore that sensation to breathe into the hips. And keep a smile on. Deep breath. You know, whenever something is too much, you can always rest. Bringing that knee back, let's extend the left leg. Flex the foot, push through the left heel, toes point up, inhale. If we need to elevate the hands, grab some props to elevate them, exhale. Fold onto that left leg. The left hip pulls back. The crown of the head pulls forward. It can be a pretty intense stretch. And there's no need to push through that stretch to go deeper, to go anywhere. Whatever stretch, whatever sensation arises for you, stay with it. Let's sit back, bring the right leg forward, lay down. And let's hook the left foot in the inner crease of the right elbow. Hug the leg. Okay. 
Again, if this is too much, just hold the foot above you and just gently try to begin to open the hip. Let's catch the left foot from the inside, from the arch of the foot. Letting go of the right arm, right hand on the right leg and gently take half happy baby. The left knee being pulled down towards the left armpit or the ground. The knee, the leg may or may not touch the ground. It doesn't have to. John, your shin perpendicular to the floor. As if you wanted to step on the ceiling. So, like from here, lift your foot. Yes, like that. Yes, you will feel it more in the hips. Pulling down, beautiful, yes. As if you wanted your knee to touch your armpit. Yes, good job. There you go. Letting go of the foot, let's catch either, again, the hamstring and pull the leg towards ourselves or the shin. Or if you can go that deep, index and middle finger, catch the toe and pull. There's no need to catch the toe if that's too intense. You can always stay here as long as you're feeling a stretch. If you're not catching the toe, Keep the foot flexed regardless, pushing through the heel, toes almost as if you wanted to point them to your face. And deep breaths, find your breath, inhale into the stretch. Exhale, a very gentle pull. Relax the shoulders. Letting go of the leg, arms overhead, lift the right leg as well. Roll all the way up. Hands on the mat. Step or jump back into Chaturanga. Beautiful. Down dog, I mean up dog or cobra. And now we're facing dog. Right leg up. And step that right foot next to the right hand. So we've been here a few times already today. Right foot next to the right hand. I'm switching sides so you can see. We're gonna bring the right arm underneath the right leg and, and place the right hand on the mat outside of the foot. So the hand is not in line with the foot. If possible, try to go low and hook the arm under the leg and place the hand outside. The farther the hand from the foot, the easier it will be to then begin to Start walking forward with that right foot and eventually lift. Let's see if we can lift that foot off the ground. Try to get low, yes, the lo yes. Walk, 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 walk. This is your first step before flying. Did it lift, Olga? I can't see the foot. Ah. It's lifting, okay. So, this may be something that we may want to revisit in the future. So once your foot lifts, what you can do is transfer your body weight forward 
and lean. And fly. Do a little break, break, what is it? Break dance, break dance move. Give it one more go. And we will keep coming back. So Gabby, before you lift the back knee, transfer the body weight forward. Yes, yes. And see if you can extend the front leg and push through the heel, activate the leg. So the leg is not a dead weight on your arm. The leg will be working, both of them. They become very active. Okay. We'll keep working on these guys, don't worry. But from here, let's see if we can lift the back knee of the mat and step directly back into your chaturanga. And up dog or downward facing dog. Now left leg up, left foot next to the left hand, lower the right knee, get low here, let's get low, pull forward, yes, and left arm right under that left leg, hand is outside, and let's see if we can lift, get low, bend the elbows, And like always, one side may feel very different than the other. Yeah, everybody has a more flexible side, stronger side, usually defined by the patterns of what we do. <laughs> nice try, Limark. So if you can lift that foot ever so slightly off the mat, you can see if you can transfer your body forward and lift the back leg. Hekapada Kondinyasana is the pose of the sage Kondinya. One more try. Step back directly into your chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. And release into child pose. Sitting all the way down. You can extend the arms by the sides of the body. Drop the forehead onto the mat. And allow the breath to calm down completely. Deep breaths into the lower back, in the back of the rib cage. And with every exhale, your body becomes a little heavier on the thighs. Inhale, slowly rolling up. And we'll take a final spinal twist. Sit on the left side of your body, cross the right foot to the outside of the left knee, right hand behind the body, left arm up, inhale, elongate, exhale. You can either hug that right knee to your chest and twist or lock the elbow outside of the knee and use it to twist. Nice. In either variation, Sink down through the hips on the mat. Growing tall through the crown of the head. So again, 
this opposite force, pulling down, pulling up, making space between the vertebrae, and then turning to look behind you, relax the, what shoulder is it? The right shoulder, let it drop behind you. Take one deep inhale, growing taller. Deep exhale, maybe turning a little deeper. Deep exhale and release. To center, we'll take the other side. So the left knee, no, the right knee is down. Left foot is outside of the right knee. Left hand, same hand as the knee behind the body. Right arm up, inhale, elongate. And as we exhale, we can either have the leg and look behind us, relax the left shoulder, let it drop as much as possible. Or we can use the elbow to push. So if you're using your elbow to push against the knee, Imagine you're trying to make your way through a very crowded space and you're pushing people to the sides with your elbows. That's how you want to gently push your knee away. As you use that resistance to grow a little taller, to twist a little deeper. One last deep inhale, growing tall through the crown of the head. And a deep exhale, twist a little deeper. And release, let's find our Shavasana. We'll stay a couple minutes and that will be it because it's one, one. If any of you has a meeting that you need to be at, it's one, one right now. We'll stay here for about two minutes. If you have any tension left anywhere in your body, feel free to give yourself an extra stretch or wiggle any body part that needs to let go of some energy. Find your Shavasana. Quiet the breath, the mind and allow yourself to fall into a deep state of relaxation. No need to do anything. No need to enter in conversation with the mind quite yet. Slowly begin to bring awareness back inside the body. Deepen the breath, wiggle your fingers and toes. 
bring the feet together, raise the arms above your head, interlace the fingers, give yourself a nice good morning stretch. Exhale, release. Bend the knees, roll to the right side on your mat. Whenever you're ready, on your own pace, come meet me in a seated position. Exhale, cross the spine straight, hands on your knees or chi mudra, your choice. Breathe here. Sitting upright, relax the shoulders. Chanting on. Inhale. Slowly open your eyes, hands to heart. Thank you. Thanks for joining me and practicing with me. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you are energized for the day. <laughs> and now you have a new challenge to play with.